yours from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. I am not the Christ. The Christ has sent me to you. The Christ has sent me to you with his words. The Christ has sent me to you with his authority to speak his words to you. The Christ has sent me with his authority to speak his words to you that you may believe in him and be saved. I am not the Christ. The Christ has sent me to you to baptize. The Christ has sent me to you to baptize in his name. Since the Christ has sent me to baptize you in his name, it is done in his authority. Therefore, when it is done in his name, he is the one who has done it. The Christ has baptized you. I am not Christ. The Christ has sent me to you to give you his body and to give you his blood for the forgiveness of your sins. It is not my body. It is not my blood. It is his body. It is his blood. And when you come forward, you are not interested in me. You are interested in the Christ. I am not the Christ. This is why the church has always vested her pastors. The church has vested her pastors so that when they stand before you, we all to a certain degree or another appear the same. It is an effort to instruct the laity that it does not matter who it is that brings you the Christ. What matters is the Christ. When I was a little boy, I asked my mom, Mom, why does Pastor wear a robe? Mom said, it's so you're not looking at his new suit. <laughs> you see her point. It is not about his erudition. It is not about his intelligence. It's not about his oratory. It's not about his wealth. It's not about his managerial skills or his success. The issue is always, does he bring you the Christ? Therefore, put another man under these robes to speak to you, and it will still be the same Christ. I am not the Christ. Neither are you. You are the body of Christ. As the body of Christ, you are the incarnate Christ upon the earth. I once had a t-shirt once that showed hands in the form of a cross. And across the top of the shirt it said, we are his hands. And so you are. You are all, each of you, members of his body. Each of you has a place in the body of Christ. Every last one of you. Regardless of your temperament, regardless of your sins, you have a place in the body of Christ. You have a place where he wishes you to serve the rest of the body. You have a place where he wishes you to be a benefit to the rest of the body. Each and every one of you. That is why God goes on to instruct us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. The hands cannot say to the legs, I don't need you. And so Jesus performs his work on earth through you. He is pleased to do so. He can perform his work from heaven. He could shout things from on high. He could interact with his world in great power and might. Some of us wish that he would do so. Instead, practicing the humility that he has always practiced since the day he was born, he has chosen to work with the world through all of you. 
but you are not the Christ. As much as you are the body of Christ, you are not the Christ. The Christ is the head of the body. He is the head of the church. He is your Savior. He is the one who has offered his life for you. Where the head is, there the members also shall be. And so while you are his body, you are not the Christ. You are his royal priests. A royal priest represents the one who sent him. So just as surely as the Christ has sent me to you, so also the Christ has sent you into the world. The vocation of a priest is to impart the holiness that he has received from the one who sent him. Just as the priests ate of the sacrifice in the Old Testament and then imparted that holiness unto Israel, so also you eat of a sacrifice and then impart that holiness to the world. By speaking of the Christ to your neighbor, you represent the Christ to your neighbor. By speaking about the Christ to your neighbor, you impart to your neighbor salvation, forgiveness, and faith. The world cannot give itself faith. The world cannot give itself the word of the gospel that you have. So God has ordained each and every one of you to be his royal priests, to impart his salvation to those around you, to bring holiness to the world, to make it fit to stand in the presence of God when he returns again in glory. And you are still not the Christ. With all of the authority with which the Christ has vested you, you are still not him. The Christ declared that John the Baptist was the greatest man who ever lived. Of all of the people born of woman, none is greater than John the Baptist. And even John the Baptist, the greatest human being who ever lived, said, I am not worthy to carry his sandals. Who are we to think that we could even touch them? We are not the Christ. I am not one of these kind of pastors, but I admire them. The pastor who devotes his entire life to a single congregation. These are remarkable men. They come out of seminary, they get ordained, and they serve the same congregation until their retirement or their death. They give their lives to their congregation to impart the gospel to them and salvation. And in spite of the fact that they have given their lives to one congregation to impart salvation and the gospel to them, their giving of their life is still not an atoning sacrifice that takes away the congregation's sins. You will give your lives in service to others. You are currently giving your lives in service to others. That's what the body of Christ does. The body of Christ gives its life in service to the world. And so in the callings which God has granted to you, you offer your life to others, to your children, to your spouse, where you dedicate your entire life to the service of this particular group of individuals. When you do this in accord with God's will, you impart salvation to them. And you are still not giving your life as an atoning sacrifice that takes away sin. There is only one who does. And that is the Christ. You are baptized only into his name. He is the only one who has died for you for your salvation. And he is the only one who has risen again from the dead. He is the Christ. And so how shall we approach him? We shall approach him in humility. We shall approach him acknowledging who he is and who we are. 
You confess that Jesus is God. You confess His authentic divinity. When you confess His authentic divinity, you are confessing that every word that He teaches you is a word that is of God. And yet when you read your Bible, do you read what you want to hear or what is actually there? Do you listen to only the parts of the Bible that you like and ignore the parts that you don't? If you make the Bible mean something else, or if you cherry pick the scriptures so that it agrees with what you already think, then you are really, in fact, listening to yourself. And by doing so, you are claiming to be the Christ. You are not the Christ. I am not the Christ. The Christ has come and he has imparted to us his words. In humility we shall listen to the law. Whether they be a word of law or a word of gospel. A word of condemnation or a word of mercy and grace. It is impossible to listen to one of these things without also listening to the other. And when you listen to both, there is only humility. And with humility, we approach the Christ the way we ought to approach the Christ. For only He is risen again from the dead. Oh, you and I will rise again from the dead, but we will rise again from the dead only when He returns and commands it to be so. He Himself is risen from the dead of Himself. And in that he will raise us. And because he is risen from the dead, there is no other way to approach him than to approach him in humility. There is no other way to regard his sacrifice other than one for our salvation. There is no other way to regard his institutions other than institutions for our good. And so we approach him. We approach Him, the Christ. We approach Him with the confession upon our lips. We are not the Christ. In the name of Jesus.